At the end of the Brazil Grand Prix, there was an air of mixed emotions throughout the rally area. This was a mix of joy, excitement, heated anger, beef and payback. You had to have been there to have felt what transpired that day for a better glimpse. It was filled with drivers satisfied with their performance and engineering teams punching the air with the consolation of doing a great job. However, something else was happening and this caught the attention of the racing community. Apparently, there had been some fracas within Team Red Bull and this had been noticeable with how the race went on in the last lap. Did you see the tussle between both riders? If not, then let's give you a little breakdown. Max Verstappen of Team Red Bull had flouted team instructions to allow his teammate Perez to take his place during the last lap. This would have given Perez the chance to have finished in a better position, but Verstappen had refused. You could hear the heated argument that ensued and this raised the question, why didn't Verstappen allow Perez to pay for him? Hey guys, welcome to our YouTube channel where we bring you the hottest news and gossip on everything Formula 1. In today's episode, we'll be dissecting and trying to understand the reasoning behind Verstappen's decision to not allow Perez to pass him. However, before we get into that juicy part, kindly like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel down below. Also, turn on our post notifications by clicking on the bell icon to get on-the-spot notifications of all our content. Okay, let's get into it. Here comes Sebastian Vettel, through goes Hamilton! Max Verstappen wins a Formula 1 Grand Prix! The Brazil Grand Prix had begun with all teams racing to beat their opposition and try to claim the sole position at the championship. The race had begun smoothly with all drivers putting in their strategies to get themselves in prime position. This had been going on and on and as the drivers were approaching the last lap, that was when the drama began. Our focus, Team Red Bull, was in a favourable position and had created a strategy that would allow them to come out top in this race. Their drivers Verstappen and Perez were blasting at full speed as they tried to beat other drivers to the putty. However, as they agreed earlier, Perez, who was in a better position, had been told to allow their top driver, Verstappen, to get past him during the race. This was decided to allow him to get to the top and win and beat the other team's favourites. Perez had allowed Verstappen to take that position ahead of him and the race was well and done. Now, here's the twist in the strategy of Team Red Bull. They have plotted that when they get to the last lap, Verstappen would allow Perez back in front of him and allow him to beat the other drivers and get a second position at the championships. Well, that was supposed to happen and, as we already know, Verstappen didn't stick to the plan. After the race, Verstappen could be seen unmoved by his decision and this had allowed for speculations on what ensued. Could this have been a moment of pride in the driver or was there some internal fracas within the team? These were the questions on everyone's lips until one question put what happened at a clearer angle. Verstappen had been asked what had happened and he would refuse to answer until a question from Sky Germany. He had been asked if the reasons for his actions were related to what happened between him and Perez at the Monaco Grand Prix. His answer to that question gave more clarity to the event of the day and is quite understandable, but seems weird as they are team members. So what happened at the Monaco Grand Prix? For Team Red Bull, the Monaco Grand Prix was a special moment for the driver Sergio Perez as he went on to place high. However, the day before his first place finish, he crashed which then elicited a red flag. This red flag had taken a turn on Verstappen's campaign at Monaco as he placed fourth behind Perez in that race. And then the next day he placed third. This might have annoyed Verstappen who expressed utmost frustration at the incident. In an interview with the Dutch media, he went on to complain about how drivers were intentionally crashing in Monaco. So it might have been out of defiance for what he felt was a deliberate act by Perez. It could also be what had happened with drivers that made him stand his ground of not following the rules. If we are also to look at what had been in the media concerning the crash, it might have been another reason for Verstappen's reaction. The Dutch media had come up with claims that Perez crashed on purpose and had told the team at Red Bull. However, judging by the footage of the race, it is inconclusive. Based on the video, the only thing anyone could hold on to was the aggressive way Perez entered the corner. However, during the media rounds, Perez had other things to say. When he was asked about the crash, he said this. I was, I think, quite close to my time. I was trying to make it up. Turn 8 had been quite difficult for me throughout the qualifying sessions, so I was trying to get quite early on the throttle. But could this have been the reason for his crash? He went on further by saying, As soon as I touched the throttle, I could feel the rear tyre was not gripping in, and I was playing with it until I lost it. 
This statement holds a lot of information. However, the aftermath of the incident brought more good tidings for the driver. The incident of that day had benefits for the Red Bull driver Sergio Perez as he went on to win the next day's race. He also placed highly at the Monaco Grand Prix, which eventually was one of his best performances in Formula 1. Red Bull rewarded Perez with a new F1 deal which would last him until the end of 2024. For Max's father, the event wasn't as simple as it looked. Jos Verstappen took to the internet to talk about how Red Bull was lackadaisical about helping his son retain his title. He said the tactics taken on by Red Bull weren't favourable to his son. Max had bad luck in qualifying because in his last run he was faster and was on his way to second place before the crash. We understand that this is the point of view of a father and he'd like to side with his son. So to end this, it might seem that Verstappen's decision was personal and not targeted at his teammate. He was not happy about the Monaco crash and we could see that from his interview and reaction at the Brazilian Grand Prix. However, one thing we can say is that the Monaco crash was a major reason for flouting the team's rule in Brazil. We've come to the end of another episode and we hope you enjoyed it. We'd love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on your post notifications to enjoy more of our content. We'd also love to hear your views on this episode and you can drop your review in the comment section below. So until next time, see you soon and stay safe.